Hello and welcome to Life Rhythms, Tarot, Food and Spirit. And it is Sunday morning in November. And I am here this morning to offer or share with you an ancestral connection spread that I have started to work with. In the last few months, I have been diving um, a lot more deeply into the exploration of my ancestors um, and the uh, understanding of what it means to be connected to ancestors. And uh, it is something that has uh, drawn me really for much of my life uh, I've been had this uh, possibility open to me both from my own uh, intuitive uh, um, uh, sensing of something of something more being uh, you know just beh uh, be beyond what we see with our eyes as a child I, I always had uh, spirit friends I I didn't think of them as imaginary friends that I played with. They were more uh, people that I, I spoke with uh, and, and uh, looked for guidance uh, from. And, and I didn't understand those words at that, that, that age because I was pretty young, six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, also in my mother's family, on her maternal side, uh, they were always very connected to exploring their family tree and it was a very active, uh, prominent activity in our life for a certain period of time. So there was the awareness of, of this and, and wanting to connect into where the roots were, where they came from, where we came from. Uh, op opposing that, there's a lot of lopsidedness, so there's kind of this rich uh, understanding on my mother's maternal side but the paternal side nothing and then on my father's side there's a lot of void and fracture there and so uh, at this point in my life for the many reasons that this has become more um, uh, uh, opening up this this well of interest and curiosity is uh, front and center for me right now uh, I'm very aware of that lopsidedness and wanting to discover and put some of those pieces together whatever I can and then also develop my own way of coming into relationship with with my ancestors both as a, a, a way of placing myself um, and not because I feel like I need to have more of a sense of my own identity but it's a relationship. It's a it's a relationship that I'm feeling called to make and come into, and also because of where I am in my life on my own personal journey, uh, wanting to make some uh, relationship with transition and what transition looks like, and and um, to make friends with the other side, if you will. So that is. Uh, those are some of the reasons why I've been drawn to create this spread. And this is really, I feel, the tip of the iceberg and a very broad, a very broad offering that I think will um, be refined. Uh, there will be more refined and, and um, more to the point questions that will, will come forward. But I, I wanted to begin where I am and to not let all of my planets in Virgo and wanting perfection to kind of get in the way of me just beginning. So um, I want to offer this very broad spread to you and I would love it if some of you might be have some interest or curiosity and if you would maybe work with it and see, see how it feels for you. So I did draw the cards yesterday and um, just really maybe for some time's sake and uh, what I would offer if you're going to do the spread, I know any of you who are doing work like this probably have your own rituals before you begin, but uh, to think about your people and the 
land or place that they came from and then what brought them to wherever you may be right now or maybe you your family and you never left the land that you originated from you know, I know people are watching from all over all over the world um, so to take some time and in, invite them in invite them into your place however you want to do that and um, one thing that I wanted to do before I drew the cards for the spread was to uh, <clears throat> call in, of course, my family, whoever uh, I know and, and the many that I don't know, but I also asked for uh, a guide from one of my cards and I've begun to work with the Weaver's Oracle uh, given to us by Carolyn Hillier. And the card that I drew as kind of my overall guide just for that throw yesterday was Nomad. And uh, the Udigan of the Fish Girdle. And I had to, I had to laugh because uh, my father's side, my father and his father and some of his brothers were fishmongers. <laughs> that is what they did when they came here. One of the things, but, but really a very prominent thing. Not that this card is about fishmongering, but she wears a, a, a fish girdle woven of silver salmon skin. And I just wanted to read a little bit uh, of what Carolyn writes uh, because I do think it is very connected to this journey for me right now. And she says, a traveling woman is beautifully bound to the ancient rhythms of the seasons when she wears a delicately crafted fish girdle. She winds the fish leather around her hips and belly so she might inhabit the spirit of their great migration dance. Inside the girdle, she learns how to survive the turbulent oceans that pull her far away from protecting streams. The girdle teaches her how to swim at the edges of those vast circles of motion how to endure no matter the distances and difficulties of her journey. The fish girdle reminds the traveling woman that her timing is perfect, for when she is done, she will know a yearning in her soul and turn back at last toward her home. And uh, I think those words say it all. I don't have to say anything more to that, but they spoke very much to me about my desire to journey out and 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 see what's out there for me for all of us and then I'll know when when it's time to come home on the many levels that that home uh, means what home means on all the levels so so to begin I'll, I'll start with this spread so it is um, I'm sorry, I really normally like to print these things out and I, I wasn't able to. Our printer is out of ink at the moment. So it is a seven card spread with um, a couple of the questions having uh, the option to throw uh, some cards under that. So it's up to, I think I have two, four, six, eight, nine. I have nine cards here. So I won't uh, labor too much around what I think the meaning of the cards are for me, but I'll give a general overview of, of what I threw. But the questions begin with perhaps choosing a card from the deck that you're working with or another deck to guide you as a, as a, a, um, uh, uh, an umbrella over the journey of the this throw. And then the first question is, uh, to your ancestors, whoever might be present for you at that moment, what guidance do you have for me? So again, this is a very broad, a broad spread for right now. And the card that I threw, I'm using uh, Ellen Lorenzi Prince's uh, Tarot of the Crone is Eight of Wands. So, you know, we see prominently the woman standing in front with a beautiful blooming sunflower you know bringing bringing some light and awareness to um, to a subject to a question perhaps 
And so this card, uh, you know, traditionally this card, you know, can mean a, a lot of movement and energy. Uh, and the, the energy here is contained, I feel, in that there's a, a knowledge or um, uh, something bright and shining a light, maybe on something that was dark. So, so here they are, you know, the guidance is, we're shining the light on this and you're shining the light on this and it is your time to stand in in front and shine the light on on this and to bloom into uh, this these questions um, and perhaps to act as a leader or a guide for others that may have these these questions so that felt very uh, I felt very connected to to that um, revelation, if you will. The second question that I pose to them is, how may I listen to you? So how may I hear you uh, as, I'm, as I'm more actively beginning to engage, you know, not just the mental exploration, but now actively looking to engage with, with my uh, ancestors. So how may I listen to you? How may I best listen to you? And what came forward is the wheel. And um, so again, I'm taking from these cards that I'm, I'm looking at right now, and the first thing that strikes me is the labyrinth, of course. And for me, I went right to uh, the, the canal of the ear. Well, this is much more, the canal of the ear is very intricate, but this is not what it looks like, but it just brought me right into the canal of my ear and thinking of inner listening. So listening with your inner ear. So, you know, not all of this but very direct how may i best listen to you listen with my inner ear my inner sensing um listen inside my organs my heart my gut and uh to uh perhaps hear patterns and what purpose you know all of these questions may may have may hold for me and for anyone asking these questions for themselves so then on to the third question what offering or practices can I make or engage in to be in relationship with you to to develop this relationship with you and the card that came forward is tradition and now this is uh, classically the hierophant and uh, this actually happens to be my, my life path card. So uh, I remember when I first, um, that first came forward for me that this was my life path card and especially some of the classic images of the Hierophant uh, in the Rider Waite and the Toth deck and uh, you know, it, it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so scary. You know, in a way it looked like the devil to me and then also felt like very I'm holding up tradition and um, I really bridled against that but I my my understanding around it is softening and widening and especially you know in this offering it's like the the Russian nesting dolls from the outside from the skin to the marrow and then from the marrow back out to the skin uh, you know everything containing and then what is at the core and then how that moves out so the teachings and so how how what practices can I engage in well I mean in a way they're saying directly be on your life path be the teacher the guide um, which is the role that I have played throughout the many you know the the, the overlay of what I might have been sharing has changed and shifted over over my life but in a, in a way I still find myself there so in a way continue what you're doing and maybe deepen into that more especially what I'm working with right now so in the fourth question is what is in need of healing again a very broad question um, I wanted to just open this up so that the other questions, more refined questions, would come to me over time. But what I wanted to do with this question was I, I, I separated it from maternal and paternal. So what is in need of healing? And then I asked on the maternal side. Um, and so what I received here is the shadow of cups. 
And um, this is a very profound card for me. Um, in a way, you can look like look at it like the woman is being just carried in a complete state of I don't, relax, relaxation or, or giving over. I really see this um, as collapse and being just uh, completely submerged in uh, emotion. And what comes forward for me, especially in this context, is um, that there's a collapse of it, the burden of sorrows and that it's very interesting that it's underwater and that this was for the maternal side because uh, my great-grandmother, Anna, who I, who I knew, who I had quite a relationship with in life, one of her sons, much before I was born, drowned when he was young. And I almost get shivers when I think of it because his name was Albert, and that is my father's name. So... Um, there's a lot in this for me, um, and I feel like there's a lot of sorrow, a lot of sorrow on that side um, that uh, wants them um, to be heard. So, now the card that I threw, um, <clears throat> what is in need of healing on the paternal side, on my father's side, seven of swords. Now. Um, I love the way, for me, Lorenzi Prince kind of softens the swords, <laughs> how, you, how I receive the swords. Uh, and this card, to, uh, to, to be in, in full reveal or honesty, has been jumping at me ever since I got this deck. And uh, I've been um, turning away from it. <laughs> Normally I pick up the jumpers, I'm like, what do you have to say? And I'll look at it, but then I kind of slide it back into the deck. So, um, you know, I, I, the thing, the, the thing that comes most to me is that on my father's side, uh, in his father came, I knew, I know nothing of my, uh, great grandfather, my father's father's father. Um, but I know, I knew and had relationship with my grandfather, Queenie, uh, Cuno is his name. Uh, we call him Queenie, Grandpa Queenie. And when he it came over, uh, he's an extraordinarily handsome man. I mean, you like you just couldn't even take your eyes off of him. And I see pictures of him when he was younger. Um, his wife, my my father's mother, passed when the they were children, very uh, sadly, and uh, left Queenie with six children. Now this is back in the fifties. You know, what is this man doing with six children? And very handsome and a bit of a bon vivant. And he had a lot of opportunity given to him because he was very um, industrious. And uh, I think that he leapt at many things. And it was at the um, expense of, of, of the kids, um, of my father and his siblings. Uh, he left them alone, essentially. So. You know, um, Lorenzi Prince, you know, is leaping, you know, leaping, reaching, um, and and going in the directions of seeing all, seeing in all directions. Obviously, all the eyes looking in all directions, and then perhaps he leapt, and and it was, um, you know, they were abandoned. So, some healing there. That's what's come forward for me. There's, you know, a lot of deepening into. Uh, possibility of deepening into all of these questions and cards so but that's what is coming forward for me right now I'll continue to work with that and then moving on to the um, the fifth question is who carries medicine for me so I'm asking what uh, what needs to be healing uh, for what needs to healing uh, on those sides and then maybe who carries medicine for me as I'm doing this work, both for myself and for them. And uh, the card that came forward is Nine of Discs, Nine of Pentacles, and one of the decks I work with, Nine of Earth. And this is a card that's been very present for me this whole month, well, we're only into the 12th day of the month, but it's been present for me a lot uh, this November. And um, uh, 
immediately when I see this card, I think of my grandmother, Anna. That's my, uh, my great-grandmother on my mother's side. And she was a woman who came here as a child, and she made her way. Strong woman, sturdy woman. She knew exactly what she needed to do for her family and how to uh, secure things for them. She, I don't love this phrase, but it's true. She wore the pants in, in the family. I did not know her husband, my great-grandfather Paul. He passed right before I was born. Uh, but I had quite relationship with her. She really raised me until I was a little girl. Uh, she passed when I was eight. I spent a, all, all my days with her, many of my days with her. Um, she was a force to be reckoned with, and she did build a village. She had 13 children, one of whom passed, Albert. Um, and uh, so in a way, she's here to protect me in a way, but also to say that I can also build this. And that in a way I have, maybe to recognize that and that I can continue to build this, this stability and this, um, these uh, places for people to come, refuge in a way, uh, for myself and for others. And then, uh, who do I carry medicine for? So a more direct question, uh, who in particular needs uh, some healing uh, that I would carry some direct medicine for? And this card, to be honest, there's no other way to say it, freaked me out because I, when I pulled it, I knew exactly who it was. And I'm not gonna go much into that um, here because I don't know who's watching perhaps in my family and this is a very contentious relationship a person I had a very contentious relationship with and she yet she was somebody extremely prominent in my um, in my life and um, I I think the healing is a healing for me and a healing for her because I hold a lot of a lot of junk around this relationship and this person. And um, I've been working for a long time to try to own it and um, make peace with it, but I, I still haven't quite found the key to do that. And perhaps through some of this work, I will. The Witch of Discs and Lorenzi Prince, just an adversary. Now, she means many things about this when you read the, the blurb of what she says, but you know, I'm just really taking that as that direct hit because that's the, where I still am sitting with, with this and this relationship. It's, it's, it's been a really difficult one for me to soften around. And um, I know that this card means many things and I don't mean to ascribe uh, such a, a negative feeling to it, but, but that is what it draws up in me. That's my relationship to it in this context right now. Um, that you know, this is what this person looked like to me, and this, this, very hard. A lot of work there for me, but perhaps there's uh, the softening is me softening and, and and healing some of her wounds, the reasons why she was that way, um, and maybe that will open some doors for me there. And then the last question uh, is all, also offered in two parts, and is the question of then what medicine do I carry into the world from from this work, from these explorations? And um, so again, I asked it as two parts, and from the maternal side, it is strength. And um, this uh, absolutely makes sense to me and uh, kind of bolsters in a way my, uh, my sense of, of my own strength and sovereignty and uh, you know in the head of the cobra the snake is my totem uh, I was born in the year of the snake the wood snake and the snake has been with me even before I knew that uh, has always been my uh, energetic companion and um, uh, I am in this head and you know there is um, a sovereignty and a strength and a, um, mm, 
there's just medicine in, in this for me to carry forward, to continue to carry forward about transformation and about uh, sharing with others uh, that they can create the space for their own transformation. So, um, yeah, this, this card is, uh, and the coming from my mother's side again, for what I know about my relationships, but as I deepen in, who knows what I might discover. But again, this is very prominently brings forward my, my great grandmother, that strength and the strength of the women in, in that, on that side. So there's a great sorrow there, but there was also a great strength there. So, um, yeah, and then uh, for the paternal side, what medicine uh, do I perhaps uh, glean from that side and carry forward into the world? And again, another card that's been with me really uh, all through October and, and continuing uh, into into um, this month, November, the Witch of Discs. And this is a very sovereign woman who uh, knows how to uh, create uh, order and bring beauty into her environment and um, and that is that really does represent a lot of my father's side the men and the women uh, that that I know on that side always very ordered and bringing beauty and um, looking to create harmony out of chaos in a way, a sturdiness. So um, that is how I, how I, how I closed it uh, with that seventh question, what medicine do I carry into the world? And um, I would love it if, even if one of you took on this as a, as a video response and um, shared your thoughts or your experiences with the spread. Um, Maybe as I'm reading through it now, maybe I could have added another closing question, but I didn't. So uh, this is the first spread I've created for sharing with others. And um, I am so honored that you may have listened to the end here and listened to the, the story and um, my journey. And perhaps this could become a tool for some of your own journey. Um, that would be wonderful and I'd love to hear about it. I will, in the, uh, in the bottom here, list all the questions and list some of the, um, the tools that I've been uh, working with to uh, uh, deepen my own journey aside from the tarot. And I just wanted to share one last thing here. I am wearing this, just this spectacular wand, healing wand made by Kasha of tarot map and her um, wands of transformation is her uh, IG handle and I, I think uh, on Facebook as well and this is a kyanite and uh, woodpecker feathers and um, she calls this she named it the high priestess and uh, I ordered this with her I think it was in October and it happens that my uh, my card of the month to work with is the High Priestess for November, and I ordered this uh, with her uh, before I I knew that. So um, you know, there's magic all around us, and uh, it's there for the touching. It wants to be touched. It wants to touch you. So I'll leave it with that. Thank you for listening. Christine saying, have a beautiful day from Life Rhythms, Tarot, Food, and Spirit. Be well.